Long before there was an astronomy club in Charlotte, North Carolina, several particular events took place which were all precursors to the eventual formation of the Charlotte Amateur Astronomers Club. Annie Jump Cannon was born in 1863 to a father who was a prominent shipbuilder in Delaware and a mother who had a childhood interest in stargazing. That mother's interest in the stars seemed to pass along to Annie, who later graduated from Wellesley College in 1884 with a degree in physics. A few years later, she was hired by Wellesley in the physics and astronomy department, teaching some classes and also learning about spectroscopy and photography. Annie Cannon went on to be hired by Edward Charles Pickering, director of the Harvard Observatory, as part of the all-women team who classified star types. She's also recognized for developing the Harvard Stellar Classification System, which is still used today. She was also responsible for over 230,000 stellar classifications she personally made, and 300 variable stars she discovered. One of Annie Jump Cannon's classmates at Wellesley College was Annie Louise Bushnell, who also graduated in 1884. She later married the Charlotte, North Carolina real estate developer, Frederick C. Abbott. Their daughter, who we now know as Charlotte Abbott Kelly, also seemed to have picked up the interest in education and astronomy through her mother's lineage. She is shown here in her Wellesley yearbook portrait. Charlotte followed in her mother's footsteps and graduated from Wellesley College in 1919. She continued her interest in astronomy with graduate studies at the University of Virginia. She also was a research assistant at the campus McCormick Observatory, which housed one of the largest telescopes in the world at that time. That newly installed instrument was a 26-inch diameter refracting telescope manufactured by Alvin Clark and Sons. The McCormick Observatory and its staff were known for their work on stellar parallax and measuring distances to stars. Graduate student Charlotte Abbott married medical student Luther Kelly in 1923, whom she had met at the University of Virginia. The happy couple settled in Charlotte, North Carolina. In 1951, the Junior League of Charlotte raised funds for a permanent science facility, the Charlotte Nature Museum. Charlotte Abbott Kelly was named as its first director, including operation of its eventual planetarium. She soon became known as the Star Lady for sharing her knowledge of astronomy with the community. In the winter of 1953 to 1954, Charlotte Kelly and Mr. Forrest Selby, retired principal of Charlotte Technical High School, found that they shared an intense interest in astronomy. They decided to search for others who might have that interest also and perhaps form an astronomical society. Mrs. Kelly, of course, had in-depth operational astronomical experience through her work as a graduate student. Mr. Selby had built the city of Charlotte's largest telescope, a nine-inch Newtonian which was mounted at the rear of his home at 2000 South Laurel Avenue. A meeting of those known to have an interest in astronomy was held at Mr. Selby's house on April 26, 1954. Among those attending was Mr. Frank Eller, chemistry and physics teacher at the recently built Myers Park High School. Mr. Eller, who was head of the science department, was interested in telescope mirror making and influenced the architecture of the new high school to include an observing deck on the roof. At the first gathering, the movie entitled The Universe was shown and slides of Mars were shown. A discussion of the possibility of life on Mars followed. At the meeting, Mr. Henry Newson donated a six-inch diameter telescope mirror which could be built into the club's 
first owned telescope. It was agreed that additional meetings would be held on the fourth Monday of each month at Myers Park High School. Later in 1954, the official name of Charlotte Amateur Astronomers Club was finalized. Officers were elected and a club constitution was written and adopted. The first officers were Charlotte Kelly, President, Forrest Selby, Vice President, Paul Goins, Secretary, Treasurer. Dues were $2 per year and the club's balance in the bank was $17. In January 1955, meeting was held at the Myers Park High School cafeteria where 300 people attended to hear Dr. Bart Bach speak on the new science of radio astronomy. Dr. Bach was internationally renowned for his research and deep interest in the structure and star formation in the Milky Way galaxy. In 1956, meetings continue at Myers Park High School and interest is growing in the new science of artificial Earth satellites. In 1956, as part of the International Geophysical Year, the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory initiated Project Moonwatch, which would enlist large numbers of amateur observers to track the first artificial satellites, and was the first organized network prepared to track satellites. This large and novel program was enthusiastically received and sparked the imaginations of the Charlotte Club. By 1957, they built a moonwatch station in the field behind the Mint Museum of Art. Everyone was ready when the Soviet Union unexpectedly launched the first satellite, Sputnik 1, on October 4, 1957. One of the club's moonwatch telescopes is on display at the club's observatory. In 1958, the club meeting moved to the Charlotte Nature Museum. The September meeting was held at the museum's planetarium, and the Moonwatch team had had some su success tracking satellites, but was hampered by early morning fog. Moonwatch pins were awarded by the Smithsonian for successful satellite tracking data. In 1959, the club received its first complete telescope, a four-inch diameter Newtonian reflector manufactured by Criterion without a drive motor, donated by Mr. Robert Hall. On June 29th, the club members met at Freedom Park to view all the naked eye planets and all could be seen, a rare event, especially in Charlotte, especially in the summer. Also during this time frame, discussions began about building a club telescope. Funding was started with collecting $39. In 1960, the club dues were raised to $4.50 per year. A large star party was held on May 2nd at Forrest Selby's home. Using his nine inch diameter telescope, was the largest viewing opportunity many members experienced in looking at the moon and visible planets. With the Smithsonian's Moonwatch program accomplishing its initial goals of enlisting the public in satellite spotting and tracking, it started refashioning the program's functions. During this time, the Astronomy Club shut down its Moonwatch station. Overall, Moonwatch, both locally and nationally, was a success in boosting interest in amateur science. This year, the club accepted a donation of a six-inch diameter Newtonian telescope mirror from Mr. Pinson. When the club moved to the Children's Nature Museum, Charlotte Kelly gave many club program presentations in the planetarium. These programs were very helpful in familiarizing club members with the fundamentals of astronomy. By 1961, the club had grown to 23 members with $66 in the Treasury. On May 25th, President John F. Kennedy, in a special speech before Congress, made this declaration. I believe that this nation should commit itself 
to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long-range exploration of space. Kennedy's vision sparked the imagination of the nation and the Astronomy Club. In 1962, the club began having star parties regularly after the monthly meeting. The campus of the Charlotte Country Day School was selected as a dark sky site for future star parties. In September 1962, President Kennedy, in a speech to 35,000 people at Rice University, restated his belief in the challenge of space exploration. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win. At the October club meeting, members heard for the first time about the plans for placing a man on the moon, the NASA Apollo program. In 1963, the club started discussing and considering building a club observatory. Also this year, the first all-night meteor watch teams gathered at the Country Day School to view the Leonids. The club-owned 6-inch F8 Newtonian is now in use. Also in 1963, after completion of several forms, the U.S. Internal Revenue Service accepted the club as a non-profit organization. This was an important milestone to allow donations to the club to be tax deductible. In 1964, most of the club's energy is expended on the new proposed club observatory plans. Where to find a dark sky site? What telescope to buy? And how to pay for it all? In the fall of 1965, the club held a picnic at Country Day School to show the location for the proposed observatory. The building of the club's observatory began in November 1965 on the campus of the Charlotte Country Day School. Comet Ikea Seiki shows off in October and some of the members get up to see it in the early morning. In 1966, after completing some more forms, the club is incorporated as a non-profit educational organization in North Carolina. The observatory was completed on April 1st, and a 10-inch diameter Celestron schmidt cassegrain telescope was ordered. The telescope was received and installed in September. dedication of the new observatory was held at Charlotte Country Day School. Dr. William Brunk, NASA Planetary Astronomy Program Chief, was flown in by pilot and club president Charles Gallant. Dr. Brunk was responsible for NASA programs such as the continuing Mariner missions to Mars and locating the next large Earth-based telescopes which soon resulted in selecting Mauna Kea and Hawaii. In 1967, the club took a field trip to the NASA Rosman Research Station in Western North Carolina. This facility was used in the 1960s and 1970s for tracking manned and unmanned space flights. This facility later evolved into the Pisgah Astronomical Research Institute. As technology marches on, members also saw their first demonstration of a laser by Dr. Robert Vermillion of UNCC. A few members traveled to Gastonia to hear astronomer Dr. Harlow Shapley speak. Dr. Shapley was known for his work in determining the distances to globular clusters and was the first to realize that the Milky Way galaxy was much larger than believed earlier. At the monthly meetings in 1968, 
Club members are hearing programs on such topics as gravitational collapse, radio astronomy, and solar spectroscopy, replacing some of the older ideas in astronomy. A large number of members gathered at the observatory to see the total lunar eclipse on April 13th. Club members attended a meeting in 1969 at Belmont Abbey College to hear Dr. Peter Vandekamp of Swarthmore College talk about his reputed discovery of planets around Barnard's star. Unfortunately, the star wobble that was integral to his claim proved to be not in the star, but in the telescope. Nineteen seventy. What a year! A total solar eclipse in March, and then Comet Bennett in April. Then, just to keep things jumping, there was a transit of Mercury in May. Members saw them all. In 1971, the club's 10-inch diameter schmidt cassegrain telescope is returned to Celestron for overhaul. An astrograph was installed at the club's observatory. The club's treasury has a balance of $219. In 1972, some club members went to the solar eclipse visible in northern Canada on July 10th. Most did not see it because of clouds. The new astrograph got some use that year, making astrophotos. Several astronomy club families went on a two-week cruise in 1973 to Africa to see the total solar eclipse on June 30th. All got to see and photograph it. Kamakahotek was seen that year, but did not live up to expectations as it was much fainter than expected. In 1974, because of growing light pollution at the country day school campus, a search for a new dark observatory site was begun. A fundraising campaign also was started to finance the observatory move. In 1975, Pluto was first spotted in Charlotte with the club's 10-inch diameter telescope. The sighting was confirmed with a photograph. Nova Cygni's 1975 was first discovered that year on August 29th at magnitude 3.0 by many independent observers around the world. By the next day, it brightened to magnitude 1.7 making it the second brightest nova of the 20th century and was visible to the naked eye. Several club members enjoyed discovering this spectacular nova for themselves. Comet West showed up in 1976 and was one of the more spectacular comets of recent times. It was very visible in February and was viewed and photographed by members. The comet broke into four pieces when passing behind the sun. Also that year, the club was accepted as a charter member of the Arts and Science Council of Charlotte-Mecklenburg. The council proposes a grant of $2,500 to be matched by club donations. In 1977, the Arts and Science Council awards the club $2,500 after a successful matching fundraising drive within the club. Searching for a new dark site for the new observatory goes on. In 1978, plans for the new observatory are drawn up. The 10-inch Celestron telescope is offered for sale to make room for the planned 16-inch diameter Cassegrain telescope. A new observatory site is found in Wesley Chapel, North Carolina, on land donated by Ms. Margaret Clark. In 1979, construction begins on the new 16-inch Cassegrain telescope. Optics for the telescope are ordered Construction of the new observatory is completed and its first star party was held on October 22nd. Cost of the observatory was about $4,000. In 1980, the housing for the club's telescopes, known as the Dog House, was installed at the new observatory. The 10-inch Celestron telescope 
was moved from the country day school site to the new Union County site. Problems were discovered with the new telescope optics and were returned for rework. The 16-inch diameter telescope reworked optics were tested and accepted in 1981. Work on the telescope mount was nearing completion. The Children's Nature Museum began charging for the use of the museum for the club meetings. There is a total of $1,892 in the treasury. In 1982, the monthly club meetings moved to the newly built Discovery Place Science and Technology Museum in Uptown Charlotte. The club's first owned telescope, the 4-inch diameter Criterion, was put up for sale. The new observatory and the 16-inch diameter telescope were completed and operational. A dedication ceremony took place at the new observatory on September 27th. Also that year, the club obtained a fine 4-inch diameter quantum Maxitov telescope for portable use at schools and remote star parties. In 1983, many members viewed the comet Iris Araki Alcock, which made its closest approach to Earth in June. Monthly meetings at Discovery Place were not working out and a search was begun for a new club meeting location. The club constitution also underwent revision that year. The big event of 1984 was the annular eclipse of the Sun on May 30th. Though not a total solar eclipse, it was extremely close, to the point that Bailey's beads were seen. A large group of members joined others from all over the United States to view it at Lake Norman. This location was very close to the greatest duration time for the eclipse. TV station WTVI made a documentary that featured several club members. An exciting time! To top it all off, astronomy club member Roger Harvey took an eclipse photograph that was featured on the cover of Astronomy Magazine. A number of club members begin to make yearly treks to Stellafane Astronomy Convention in Springfield, Vermont. This event, which dates back to 1926, is focused on telescope making and telescopes made by amateurs. The monthly club meeting is moved to the Piedmont Natural Gas Office off Rexford Drive. The club's 10-inch Celestron Telescope is sold for $1,000. In 1985, in anticipation of the arrival of Halley's Comet the following year, the club voted to build a large trailer-mounted telescope so the observations of the comet could be made from remote dark sky sites. The Arts and Science Council gave funds for the telescope and its storage garage. The telescope was a 17 and a half inch diameter, equatorially mounted Newtonian reflector and was referred to as Godzilla in view of its large size. The telescope was dedicated to the memory of the Reverend Oren Moore, Jr. In 1986, Halley's Comet attracted much attention in the winter. Several observing sessions were held at the club's observatory and one at McAlpine Greenway Park for the public. Ron Simpson, an active member of the club and builder of one of the first computer-controlled telescopes, entered his telescope in the annual contest at the Stellafane Convention. Ron got first place for his telescope and Godzilla received second place. This was a real achievement for members of the club. 
a very large set of 20 by 120 millimeter binoculars were donated to the club by Mac Wood. These are a great treasure for observing. The outstanding event of 1987 was the first Southern Star. The club sponsored the first astronomical convention held at Wild Acres Retreat, owned by the Blumenthal Foundation near Little Switzerland, North Carolina. Everyone enjoyed the mixed format of lectures by knowledgeable people in astronomy combined with some possible night sky observing, all in a beautiful Blue Ridge Mountain location. The convention's proceeds helped finance the club's future observatory. Tom Lorenzen and Tim Seckler, both long-standing club members, produced an extremely well-done publication for amateur astronomers called 1000 Plus, the Amateur Astronomer's Field Guide to Deep Sky Observing. In 1988, the club's founder, Charlotte Abbott Kelly, died on January 30th. She always came through when the club was in need. Throughout her life, she inspired many to be students of science and astronomy. In 1989, Hurricane Hugo, the worst hurricane in history to hit the Piedmont of North Carolina, did some minor damage to the club's observatory in Wesley Chapel. Some active club members attended star parties in the North Carolina and Tennessee mountains. Stellophane was still a big event to attend in the summer. In 1990, the search began for a new observatory site. Efforts are made to include the Rock Hill Amateur Astronomers in the plans for the future observatory, but nothing resulted from that effort. Several club members enrolled in a mirror-making class at the Museum of York County. Most mirrors are completed and made into telescopes. The big attraction in 1991 is the total solar eclipse on July 11th. A small group of club members fly to Hawaii to see the eclipse and the volcanoes. No one is disappointed. The club meeting place is moved from the Piedmont Natural Gas Building to the Duke Power Office Building on Woodlawn and Park Road. A few meetings were held there. The club meeting place is again moved in 1992, this time to the Unitarian Church on Sharon Amity Road. Interesting speakers from diverse locations such as South Africa, the University of Virginia, and the University of South Carolina at Lancaster provide fine programs at the meetings. The Spangler Foundation donated $5,000 to the club's proposed observatory. The Olms family of Lake Zurich, Illinois donated a 24-inch diameter mirror blank. The Arts and Science Council gave $3,000 to be used to complete the mirror blank into a telescope mirror. The mirror blank was sent to the Fair Optical Company in Michigan for completion. In 1993, the club meeting place is moved to Uptown Charlotte at the two First Union Buildings Auditorium. The Southern Star Astronomy Convention at Wild Acres continues to grow in popularity, selling out each year and filling the club's treasury with the funds necessary to finance the new observatory and telescope. Club members interested in observing in dark sky locations are using the Godzilla telescope at star parties at Downton Park and Julian Price Park, both on the Blue Ridge Parkway in the mountains of North Carolina. By 1994, attendance at club meetings had declined. Although the two First Union Auditorium has all the best and latest audiovisual equipment, many members do not like club meetings in Charlotte Uptown and complained. Albert Pesedo is given the task of finding a new observatory site south of Charlotte. 
The big event of the year was the crash of comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 into Jupiter. Since this was an unprecedented event, no one was sure what might be visible from such an impact. A large gathering of members, guests, and telescopes were at the observatory for the event. No impacts were sighted, though the space-based telescopes obtained some magnificent views. Work was started on the construction of the 24-inch diameter telescope. The completed 24-inch mirror was received from Fair Optical. Al Becedo is successful in finding a site for the new observatory. The club leased two acres of land in Lancaster County from Mr. J. R. Braswell of Wingate, North Carolina, for $100 per year. In that year, club members Charlie and Gwen Clayton first hosted the annual Christmas party at their home. This started a tradition that has gone on 21 years and counting at the Clayton's home. A great time for all. Much important work was accomplished in 1995 at the new observatory. The trailer warm-up room was installed along with the water well, electricity, and the septic tank. The 16-inch diameter telescope and its doghouse storage building were removed from the old observatory site. By this time, a contingent of Astronomy Club members had begun making a trip to the annual Winter Star Party, which had started in the Florida Keys in 1984. Usually warm weather in the Keys during February, clear dark skies, good lectures, and the chance to meet with about 500 other amateur astronomers were an irresistible draw to this event. Comet Hayakataki is the astronomical event of 1996. The comet made its closest approach to Earth in March and remained a naked eye object through May. This exceeded expectations and became the brightest comet since Comet West of 1976. Concrete pads are constructed at the new observatory and the club's 16-inch telescope and doghouse building are installed. The club meeting place is moved from uptown to the American Red Cross building on Park Road. Comet hale bopp is an important celestial event for 1997. It became known as the Great Comet of 1997 and was visible to the naked eye for 18 months. New rules for the observatory were drawn up and approved by the club's membership. The observatory building for the 24-inch telescope was built. In 1998, work continued at a feverish pace to complete the observatory. The new observatory dedication party with barbecue was held on May 22nd. The new observatory complex is named for Gail Rigsby. The 24-inch telescope was named for Albert Becedo and the support facility for Roy Sims. A library section in the support facility is named for the late member David Austin. The club meeting place was moved in November to the Firefighters Union Hall on Monroe Road. The club's website was established by Ralph Oleski. Dues for the club membership increased to $25.
one story about inspiration starts with a youngster affiliated with the astronomy club and was mentored by a club member. He did very well in science fairs with projects on satellites and later eclipsing binaries. Eventually, Chris Mullis graduated with a PhD in astrophysics and spent hundreds of nights studying deep space galaxy clusters with the world's largest telescopes, including the 10-meter telescope atop Mauna Kea, Hawaii, and the VLT 8-meter telescope in Chile, as well as work with the Hubble Space Telescope. Chris's passion for science and his pathway into professional astronomy is a testament to the power of public outreach from amateur astronomy organizations. In 1999, the club took a breather after many years of fundraising and telescope building. All the projects planned over the past 15 years were complete. It was a time to enjoy what we had done. In the year 2000, in addition to the turn of the millennium, the club saw attendance soar attributable to a higher visibility through the internet website. The club also acquired its first laptop computer and electronic projector for furthering outreach and improving club meeting presentations. The astronomical event of the year 2001 was the Leonid meteor shower in November. It was really more of a meteor storm with counts reaching 3,000 per hour. Over 50 members huddled in warm coats and blankets at the observatory looking up at this wonder in the sky. In 2002, the club instituted a telescope loaner program to help new members without telescopes spend more time becoming familiar with the night sky in their own backyard. With the majority of club members now having email addresses, the electronic version of the club newsletter was established as an option to U.S. mail delivery. Several equipment purchases were made, including a new Russian-made angled 20 by 140 millimeter astrobinocular for the observatory. Excellent wide field views. Two thousand four was a year of many club activities. The Astronomy Club started Discovery Place Star Parties on their parking deck in Uptown Charlotte. A Charlotte Amateur Astronomers Club fiftieth anniversary barbecue party was held at the Firefighters Hall. Bob Ariel a member of the Astronomy Club and an antique telescope collector in Columbia, South Carolina, had an 8-inch Alvin Clark & Sons refractor in his possession and arranged for its long-term loan to the club. The club used a $10,000 donation to pay for the refractor project. Thanks to the hard work of club members led by Gail Rigsby, a 13-foot diameter domed building was installed at the observatory to house this wonderful telescope. In 2005, Gale led the work with a team of volunteers that was needed to clean, refurbish, and reassemble the 8-inch Alvin Clark refractor. The restored telescope saw first light that year in its new home. Also at the observatory, a new observing concrete pad was built for club members. It was an instant hit. Our 20th Southern Star Astronomical Convention was a near sellout with powerful speakers and great weather. After meeting in the Firefighters Union Hall for many years, the club meeting location moved to Holy Comforter Church and then to the Masonic Association building. In 2006, Dr. Steve Harris, a member of the Astronomy Club, donated a Daystar H-Alpha filter for solar observing use with the Alvin Clark refractor. This donation provided the club with a solar capability at the observatory. The club began a year-long strategic planning process chaired by Jim Lamb to help better understand how to serve the membership more effectively. This process had many positive outcomes. In 2007, the club executed a high response rate membership questionnaire designed to identify areas of opportunity for our club. Thanks to the execution of earlier strategic plans, we saw an uptick in volunteerism. 
we establish five primary imperatives for the Astronomy Club. Membership development, website improvements, continue observatory development, look for long-term financial security, and further develop volunteer programs. A real highlight of the year was bringing the original sidewalk astronomer, John Dobson, to Charlotte for several public events that included a public lecture at Discovery Place and a star party on their parking deck. John Dobson was a former monk and self-taught astronomer. Over the years, he developed a simplified, easy-to-build telescope and mounting system that helped share the wonders of the universe with many people. That design became known as a Dobsonian telescope. In follow-up to one of the identified areas of opportunity for the club, a special committee was formulated in 2008 by club president Jim Lamb. Their task was to formulate what the observatory should look like to maximize its usefulness to members in the future. They were told to dream big and that no idea should be quickly discarded. Throughout 2009, the appointed Observatory Dream Committee completed its work with some very thoughtful and significant suggestions. By January 2010, the list of project goals was finalized and was summarized as a strategic plan presented to the membership in February. The plan included a new warm-up and outreach center, a family picnic pavilion, new RV camping spots, some equipment upgrades, and refurbishment of the parking lot. Ken Steiner was appointed project manager for the overall project. Fundraising was kicked off with a $25,000 donation made by the Spangler Foundation. Another $48,000 was needed to fulfill the plan. Fundraising for the new club construction project got underway in earnest from members and friends of the club as well. Detailed plans for the project scope were developed. Enough funds were raised by fall to begin construction of the new building in December. With wall truss brackets installed on the concrete slab the week before, the largest number of volunteers that ever turned out for an observatory project showed up on a cold Saturday morning for what might best be described as a barn raising. All the building wall trusses were erected in just one day. A fantastic accomplishment. The end walls and other building components followed soon after that. In 2011, the club's efforts were focused on the building construction and additional fundraising to complete the entire strategic plan. All elements of the plan made great progress throughout the year. Also in 2011, the club celebrated the 25th anniversary of Southern Star. It was a great pleasure to reflect briefly on the growth of this convention and fine astronomy professionals who had been guest speakers over the years. Two thousand twelve was an exciting year. The building phases for the strategic plan were completed, including a new sixty five foot antenna mast, an electronic weather station, a fully equipped classroom, a warm up area, and new RV camping spots. The Ken Steiner Astronomy Outreach Center was dedicated on june ninth, two thousand twelve, and a fine celebration including balloon rides, courtesy of Don Klein, 
president of the Pisgah Astronomical Research Institute. At the dedication, the building that is home to the 24-inch telescope was named in honor of the club's founder, Charlotte Kelly. All phases of the strategic plan were complete and the project officially closed in April 2013. The final project cost was $72,805, just under the project budget of $73,000. A huge job! Well done! In 2014, through a generous donation, a new Lunt solar telescope and observatory building were added for observing the Sun in the hydrogen alpha spectrum. Dr. Gary Taus, the owner of the 8-inch Alvin Clark Refractor Telescope on long-term loan to the club, gifted the ownership of the telescope to the club. This unique telescope now had a permanent home through this wonderful gift. The 24-inch telescope was enhanced by converting it from a polar-mounted, manually-operated push-to system for finding objects in the night sky to an altitude azimuth mount with a fully motorized go-to drive. Also in 2014, the club acquired a dedicated Meade Astro Imaging Telescope in its own domed building. This was a great addition to enable members to explore digital photography of the night sky. Over these many years, the club has had tremendous growth, from the initial gathering of a few like-minded people with an interest in astronomy, to helping many children and adults learn more about the universe, sharing that information throughout the community, and hopefully, inspiring some to reach for the stars. <laughs>